Uh, let's say you have someone's face and you want to conceal their identity and blur them out. Uh, it's easy enough to blur out someone's face, but we're going to look at using some motion tracking so that if they move around a little bit, uh, you can follow their face. We're going to do this in Blender right now. Hello, okay, we're going to get started. Uh, first off, I'm using Blender 2.63, which is actually a few versions behind. I actually have a current version on here. I'm just not using it in this tutorial just because that's not what I clicked on. Also, I apologize. I'm watching my daughter this morning while my wife is at work. So if you hear some noise in the background, that is her. Um, so basically, you know, it's real easy uh, to blur out someone's face in video editors. You can Blender, Caden Live. Um, but uh, I'm going to be using some motion tracking here. And this is just the way I would do it. Not saying it's the most efficient way of doing it. Um, I think Caden Live might actually have a feature like this built in. I haven't played with that feature yet, if so, but I feel like I saw that in there somewhere. But anyway, uh, definitely watch my previous tutorials on motion tracking in Blender, because I'm going to go through that part kind of fast here, hopefully. But let's get our default scene set up here. Uh, I'm going to uh, go to my front view here, Control alt 0 to move my camera there, delete the default cube, and then I'm going to circle, and I'm going to add in a uh, NURB circle, I believe is how you say that. Uh, it, right now it's facing up, so you don't really see it. I'm going to hit R for rotate, X and 90 to rotate it 90 degrees. It's now just a path, it's transparent. If we go to our path tabs here with that selected and set to 2D, you can now see it. I'll hit F12, render it out. That's what it looks like, a little black dot on our gray background. Now that we've got that set up, we're going to do a little bit more with that later on, but let's just click down here and go up to our movie clip editor. And we're going to import a movie. So open, uh, go to where your movie is. I'm going to import this one here. Uh, and um, we need to set our scene to the length of this uh, movie clip here. Uh, there's multiple ways to figure out the length of the video. I believe I've shown other ways. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to go over here to, um, to uh, materials. Select the default material and texture. And under texture, I'm just going to change... Uh, this to uh, image or movie and go open and I'm going to choose that video again and right here it will show you uh, frames this video is 564 frames that's kind of probably a long way to do it uh, I, I feel there's better ways to do it but that's just the one that popped in my head right now so let's go to our our render uh, tab here remember uh, 564 and frame 564 so now our project is the same length as this video clip. Make sure we're at the first frame of our video. You can just hit, uh, oops, shift left, not control left, shift left. That'll bring you to the first frame. You can see that down here or down here. Uh, at this point, we need to find something to track. You know, Now, if you know you're going to be tracking something, it's always good to put some sort of tracker on your object. But if you're blowing out someone's face, you may not be setting up to motion track. You may just be working with straight video. So here, I'm just going to track one of my nostrils. Uh, and uh, uh, it's probably not going to go all the way through on the first try. Probably going to have to reset it a few times just because of uh, the... Uh, the blurriness of the video as I move around. I'll get into more of that as we move along. But I'm going to click up here, add marker and move. So here's a marker, put it there. I'm going to hit S to scale that up. And there we go. We're now marked on my nostril. I can now hit this little play arrow here. And you can see it starts tracking my nostril. It's doing pretty good, uh, even with the big movements. Now it jumped to the other nostril. If we were really working with something important on motion tracking, obviously that would be bad, but we're just blurring out someone's face, so if it's a little off, it's not a big deal. Um, but let's see where we lost the nostril. Yeah, so right there. Um, it's kind of a big jump, so I will reset it from here. I'll go like that, play a little bit, reset it again, play. There we go, it's tracking it again. So we're going to have to do this a few times and mainly because like shots like this are quite blurry so the computer's like well that doesn't look like what I'm tracking anymore um, and there's things you can do to overcome that uh, when you're filming one uh, better lighting means that you can have a quicker uh, frame or shutter rate on your camera 
and that will allow for for less blurriness so better lighting if you have a camera that shoots at faster frames per second uh, like my uh, DLSR uh, records at 60 frames a second if I want it to where a regular camera records a digital camera records at 30 frames a second or 29.999 um, right now with this video I'm just using a little flip camera a little cheap little portable camera and uh, it really has no options like that so you hear at the end it tracked the other nostril just because it both my nostrils look the same <laughs> and they're next to each other not a big deal in this case but I believe yes we made all the way to the last frame so now what I'm going to do to hit ends remove that side tab there I'm gonna drag this up and T to get rid of that sidebar and I'm going to say um, change this to a 3d view so this is our 3d view we're back in our 3d view here and uh, at this point I am going to sh control no shift left I always get that backwards shift left go back to our first frame and I'm going to say uh, over here set as background so we'll set this same video as the background over here and what I want to do is I want to position the circle we created earlier so it covers my face so I'm gonna grab it put it at the center of my face scale it up some scale it on the z-axis axes there we go so this is what it's going to be blurring out now select our little tracker over here and hit tab to go into edit mode and we're going to uh, uh, link empty to track and there we now we have a little empty object here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select our circle and then shift select oops shift select our empty and control P object we've now parented our circular object to our empty which is following this tracker so if I hit alt a now you can see that the circle is now following my face gets a little shaky at points that's when it's jumping from nostril to nostril but as long as it's over my face that's what we're going for here so we're good to go we can now go into our compositor because right now if we hit F12 we still just get a black dot so I'm gonna come up here and go to compositing I'm going to use node auto render uh, then I'm gonna click this little render button so we can see our render right there and now at this point we're gonna shift A and we're going to go to uh, inputs and we're gonna go movie clip and we've already imported our movie clip so we just click the little strip here you can find it there it is and uh, now we want to uh, first off scale if if your video is the same resolution as your project great no problem uh, mine is actually uh, my video since from the flip camera is uh, 720p where my project is 1080p as you can see over here now I can change my project or I'm just going to what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shift a and go to um, distort scale and connect that there and I'm gonna set this to uh, render size so now it's going to be size to whatever my render is or you can do scene size just depending on your project right now they're both the same so uh, I can now minimize that next we're gonna add a blur so once again shift a to bring up this little menu and we're going to go to uh, filters we're gonna go blur I'm gonna change this to fast Gaussian and I'm going to connect the output from here to here and I'll connect to our render just so you can see that's the picture of me video of me we'll change this we really want our blur to be blurry so I'm gonna set this pretty high 100 so that is what our blur is gonna look like but obviously right here we're completely blurring out everything um, let's shift D actually let's minimize it and then we'll shift D it so I just cloned that blur and we're gonna blur our little circle here but actually we're not gonna blur the image we're gonna blur the alpha which is going to give us a black and white image like this so it's this is our original render like this but using the alpha instead it's going to set what uh, uh, it's going to give us a mask and using that blur node gave us instead of a straight circle a feathered circle so basically we have one more uh, little node here to add we're going to hit shift a we're going to go to color alpha over and we're going to take 
our blurred image, put that on bottom, and then our scaled original image, put that on top, and then we're going to take our blurred feather mask and put this into the little gray fac. And now if we connect that to our compositing output, you can see uh, that my face is blurred. And it's going to blur it based on the movement of the, uh, the little circle we created here. So now we just need to render it out. I'm going to call this face b.avi. I'm going to, you can choose whatever format you want. I'm going to choose xvid and encoder. I'm going to choose preset xvid. And uh, at this point, I think we're all set. I'm going to click animate and it's going to start generating each image. <laughs> Sorry about my daughter. <laughs> She's excited back there. She likes when daddy makes videos for everybody. Okay, so uh, pretty much we got the video done here. Now, audio, you can either lay back in. If you were to bring this into another video editor, such as Caden Live, you can do the original audio track from the original video and this video we just generated. Or you could actually do it uh, within Blender here if you were to go to um, the video editor here. You can import your scene, uh, your, com your composite, and the uh, audio. Uh, and so that's one option there. Uh, but since uh, I was kind of mainly focusing on the video here, that's all we're going to go over today. You saw the video at the beginning, and I'll play it here again at the end. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy this tutorial, please let me know by uh, giving a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to visit my site. Click on the help link, um, which will bring you to my RC channel, which is a great place to ask questions, much better than YouTube comments, which is a horrible place to ask questions. And um, I just thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a great day.